Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which is worse. <laughs> Welcome to My Point Through Garage. Today, we are going to be doing two videos. One of them is going to be on the 10 likes that we have, or the, our 10 favorite things about this Bronco. The second one in this video is going to be the 10 things we hate about this Bronco. Now, I don't know, hate's a pretty strong word, and we will tell you there are a couple of things that we hate in this Bronco, and we will let you know the level of hate, or whether or not it's just a dislike, something we can live with. Uh, but all of these things are things that Ford needs to take a look at for the 2023 model. Let's get started. Number one most irritating thing is there's no vents back here to quickly get heat back here to the kids when it's cold. So there are some vents underneath this seat, but the mats get in the way and block the vent. I don't know how that slipped through engineering with a vehicle that is 2021 that you're able to take the top and the doors off and use in the mountains because it does get cold and those vents would make a huge difference. Engineers, come on, man. Number two is something that I knew would be a problem if Ford did not fix it from the F-150s and all the other Ford vehicles, which is the wireless charging. It has been known to be horribly bad and when it does work, it doesn't work with a lot of phones. For instance, my iPhone 12. I've heard that it doesn't work with the iPhone 12, although it will show that it's charging. The problem is it charges at such a low rate that I'm not getting any charge out of it. All right, so I'm on my home screen. I'm gonna go ahead and set this down in here and it will connect. So now I am connected and charging. Now it was at 77% when I stuck it in there and we drove around for about a half an hour and this is when it will actually stay in there because most of the time especially off-roading it'll bounce around and there's no possible way to get it to stay uh, but even on just standard roads when it's nice and level the phone will only charge two percent regardless of what i do if it's on one percent it'll charge to three percent if it's on eighty percent it'll charge to eighty two percent i can't get it to charge any more than that and then on top of that it gets super hot which wireless charging does which i understand uh, so i took it out of the case and i put it on there to see if it would charge any better and it doesn't so there are a lot of hacks out there there actually is a charger uh, there is a slot for your USB charger right there. So that's what we're going to do is we're just going to hook it right into there. You can also hook a wireless charging, an aftermarket wireless charging kit right to this. So if you wanted to use a pad that charges better, you can hook it to your USB and be fine. Engineers, come on, man. Number three, most hated thing in our Bronco, the auto stop start. Now, I know a lot of vehicles have this. Probably almost all vehicles have this now. We're not used to it and there is a bypass for it. So come down here and you'll see this A with a little circle next to it and you hit that. So the problem is, is that you have to do that every single time you get in the car because I am not an auto start stop guy. I will never use that option. But you know what? I'm not gonna give a Ford engineers come on man to that one because I understand why it's there. It's supposed to be better for fuel economy and stuff, but I will guarantee you that you're going to be doing more damage to your engine and your starter over a long period. Once this thing is out of warranty, I just see a starter replacement in, in the future. So I'm not going to give a an engineer come on man, but come on man! Number four is the sound system. Now, you've heard a lot from a lot of uh, folks that have Broncos about how the sound system is lacking. And they are, for the most part that I can tell, talking about the bass speaker system. So in this vehicle, we have the Lux package because this is the first edition. We have the upgraded speaker package, which is the B&O or Bang & Olufsen uh, system, which is a 10 speaker system. And it, I, I still think it's lacking. And, and here's, here's the problem that we have with it is that at low, at low volumes, it actually sounds really good. The problem is I don't listen to music at a low volume. So I listen to uh, you know, Alice in Chains and I listen to glam metal and stuff like that. And so when I'm listening to it, I don't have it at, at a low volume. I have it at a high volume. And even Mandy listens to a lot of 80s music and uh, stuff like Sting actually makes the speaker shake in the back to the point where it vibrates the plastic and makes all sorts of ungodly noises. So we're going to turn on the music from our station and let you listen to it. <laughs> Other 
other than the speaker shake, the other problem is that when you have the top and the doors off, you it's really hard at any speed, 40, 50 miles an hour, to really hear the music because even though it says it goes to 30, it, it basically does not go to 30. It I, I can't get it loud enough, but if I were to put an amplifier in this vehicle, uh, I honestly think that shaking is going to get worse. So what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to leave the front speakers and I think I'm going to replace the rear speakers and I think that might fix it. But to the engineers that developed this B&O sound system, come on, man. Number five, the handles are in a weird spot. I feel like this handle needs to be on the A-pillar, especially for me to get into the vehicle. Another spot is this one right here. Um, I guess when you're just off-road, this is me getting in with this handle right here. So there's really nothing to step on, on. So if I go like this, I'm almost hitting my head. So I feel like being on the A-pillar, I swing in a lot better. The Raptors were on the A-pillar and I feel like I'm maybe just used to it. But engineers, come on, man. Number six, uh, we opted for all the rubber mats, which are great, don't get me wrong, but there's no cargo mat for the back. Plus any spills or anything like that, it's easy cleanup. Not the engineer's fault, but Ford, come on, man. Number seven, the gauge. Now, I'm not talking about the digital gauges. I'm talking about the analog gauge for the speedometer. It looks like something out of a 1984 Fiero. So let's take a look at this thing. I mean, honestly, this right here looks like the stickers that you get when you're building a model and you're trying to get like the little tiny decals in there to make it look like you have a speedometer inside of the plastic car. That's what this looks like. We could have done such a, I mean, with all the other digital gauges over here, we could have actually done a digital speedometer, or we could have done a white-faced speedometer, or we could have done something really cool with just like a, a, a circular analog speedometer that had like a Bronco and some mountains on the back or something like that. But instead, we got the 1984 Fiero instrument cluster. And so I'm going to say to the engineers who came up with this speedometer, come on, man. Number eight. For a brand new vehicle that just came off the line, this first edition badge is crooked. So this isn't the engineer's fault, but for Ford quality control, come on, man. Number nine, there's no CD player. So it's not the engineer's fault, but for all of us old people that like our CDs, come on, man. Number 10, and probably the most important to me, is the fact that we bought a first edition we bought it with a hardtop we waited for a long time to get this hardtop and then we find out that it doesn't have roof rack capability right now at least and we've seen lots of mock-ups from lots of companies that have attempted to do a hardtop or to do a roof rack on it and there actually is a few companies out there that have a roof rack available maybe i don't know if it's actually available or not but they're actually showing it and we'll do a separate video on that but how do you develop a vehicle with a hardtop that goes off-road that costs over $50,000 and not have a roof rack available for it right out of the gate or even just come with it? So to the Ford engineers that developed this hardtop and the roof rack, come on, man. So those were our top 10 um, hates, dislikes, come on, mans for the Ford engineers and Ford in general. But do understand this. This is all in jest. Uh, these are things that we think Ford should take a look at. But overall, we love this Bronco. Now, none of these things were a deal breaker for us, and they wouldn't be, even if we knew some of these things before we bought it, it still wouldn't be a deal breaker. But we did our top 10 loves and our top 10 hates of the new Bronco. If you haven't watched the top 10 loves yet, it's gonna be on our end screen, so check that out before you go. And that's a wrap from Mop and Garage. Check out our other videos, and subscribe if this was in any way helpful or entertaining.